Hi everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be going over why coalescing matters. Now, in previous examples, we had gone over a naive version of matrix multiplication, where we talked a little bit about things we might do to optimize it in the future, and a little bit on uh, memory coalescing and aligned versus misaligned accesses. Uh, and then we did an example where we showed that we can optimize matrix multiply by uh, using shared memory. So loading a bunch of data into the really close to uh, within the core uh, shared memory or scratch pad memory and then accessing uh, just chunks of the whole matrix from there. So getting some really high performance by, you know, four or five, or five ten cycle uh, access times to shared memory versus a couple hundred going all the way out to DRAM. So we're going to talk about another kind of thing that we need to keep in matter, and we're going to look at performance numbers at the end, and that's going to be why coalescing matters. So let's go ahead and start off. So the goal in this video, we're going to understand another key aspect of GPU code, uh, GPU code performance, and then show how uh, memory alignment uh, impacts code performance. So let's start out. We need to recall row major order. So programming languages can give us a convenient abstraction of memory. We can do kind of whatever we want with it, um, as long as we do you know, legal operations. Uh, but that doesn't mean that because we're accessing memory or looking at memory a certain way, that doesn't mean it's built that way. So recall what a matrix is going to look like when we program it. It's going to look like a matrix. So it's going to look like this square. But in reality, so this is what it looks like to the programmer. But in terms of memory addresses, uh, we do this thing called row major order. So this is actually going to look like um, one linear set of addresses. So your address space is going to look like this big linear set of addresses. Um, so you know this is important to keep in mind when we talk about now uh, for aligned accesses. So consider the B matrix um, when we're doing matrix multiplication. So every single thread uh, denoted by those error arrows is going to access a different column. Now, columns are adjacent in memory, as you can see up here. So um, it goes down a single row of that matrix. And then uh, multiple adjacent accesses can be coalesced into a single wide axis. So if we go ahead and uh, lay this out like it actually looks in memory, we see that even after this is laid out in memory, all of these threads will be touching adjacent spots in memory. So these can be uh, this thing called coalesced. So instead of making four separate accesses to different locations, we can make one large access. Uh, and this gives us a little bit of performance. So let's look at the opposite case. So for misaligned accesses. So consider the A matrix now. Now with the A matrix, uh, we're going to have these threads and they're going to access different rows and they're going to march along the rows. So in this case, each thread accesses a different row. Rows are not adjacent in memory. Uh, multiple accesses to memory, uh, this leads to multiple accesses to memory that are independent. And uh, we have to keep in mind that while this looks like, hey, well, maybe, you know, those, those, are, those are only about four elements apart um, in this example. Now, we have to keep in mind that each of these colors represents a different row. And like the rows we're working with, these would actually be uh, 1024 elements apart. So these could be very, very far apart. And 1024 is on the low side of what things could be. These could be thousands of elements away from each other in memory. So these definitely couldn't get coalesced. So it's an important thing to think about. So what's next? So let's go through some actual profiler data, uh, data that we have. So if we pull up Visual Studio, we'll start with uh, our profiler report of 10 runs of the naive version of matrix multiplication that we started out with. So this is with uh, uh, no optimization. So we get implicitly um, our B vector accesses because they, uh, uh, they follow that pattern of being consecutive columns. Uh, those are going to be uh, coalesced, but then you know uh, the rows itself, those, those won't end up being coalesced. And so we get this performance. Uh, so, um, we ran it about 10 times just to get rid of any kind of uh, uh, unfairness or startup costs, just to see what more steady state would be. And we're hovering around between 18 and high 17 uh, millisecond marks, um, ignoring the first, the first run cost of about 20 milliseconds, but they're usually around high 17s to high 18s, maybe even low 19 milliseconds. 
Now, uh, so how do we solve this problem of the A matrix not being uh, aligned axes? So this is actually pretty simple. We can actually just go to the code real quick. So instead of, uh, instead of working on the matrix as is, we can do a little bit of pre-processing. So we can do a transpose on the matrix. And when we do a transpose on the matrix, all the rows become columns and vice versa. The columns become rows now. Uh, now in this case, that means we're accessing consecutive columns for both the A matrix and the B matrix this time. And we can get the same result. We just need to change how we access it, uh, access that big A matrix in our kernel now. But that's something that's fairly trivial to do. We simply have to uh, uh, change how we're indexing. So instead of iterating over constant rows, now we use K columns just like we do with the B matrix. And this gives us so here's our original numbers. So usually around 18 milliseconds to 19 milliseconds with a couple high 17s. And we go over here, we see that it's mainly in the 17 millisecond range uh, to low 17 milliseconds. So 17.1, um, a couple high in the 18.1. Uh, now, uh, but overall, it's generally about a, a millisecond better. So not quite the uh, 2x performance increase that we got when we use shared memory, but still uh, a, a, a significant amount in reality. Now, what about the uh, extreme case? So what if uh, the A matrix is unaligned, kind of as is, and then we take the uh, B matrix, and then we make the B matrix to be not aligned as well. So you may be thinking like, oh, well, it may get a little bit better. Or, or sorry, it may get a little bit worse, but let's look, pull up the performance numbers. Ah, so we can actually zoom in a little bit here. So let's zoom in. So we actually uh, decrease performance by about 5x. So pretty bad. So we moved from about 18 milliseconds to being around 72 milliseconds to around 62 milliseconds, hovering around the mid 60s millisecond range. So this just kind of goes to show that alignment really does matter when we're talking about uh, uh, memory accesses. And so it's important that we're thinking about how our kernel is going to touch memory, uh, uh, you know, over loop iterations and within the same loop iteration. So that's going to do it for today. As always, if we go to the GitHub page uh, for Coffee Before Arch, and we go to the CUDA programming repository. We have all of our previous examples of the two different versions of matrix multiplication with the third, with this alignment thing, uh, the selectable alignment thing uh, will be uploaded shortly uh, along with all the files. So if we actually go to alignment matrix mall and then it doesn't look like I've uploaded the file yet, but as we can see, we've got uh, normal matrix multiplication that this is based off of and we can go through all that code. So as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.